In this video, we will show you how to replace your electronic coolant temp sensor on this Acura MDX with a 3.7 liter engine. This will be located along the top front of your engine. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The coolant temp sensor is part of the cooling system and we're going to have to be dealing with the coolant. Starting with the radiator, we're going to open up the radiator cap. We'll give this a quick inspection and go ahead and reinstall it. When removing this, you want to press it down, lift it up and away from your face, just in case there's any pressure. A quick inspection of the seal. Assuming that looks good, we'll go ahead and reinstall that cap. Now let's move along the top front of the engine. In this area, we're going to remove the top engine cover. This is going to be very simple. Using a flathead screwdriver, you're going to find that you have two plastic screws across the front. All you need to do for these is turn them a quarter turn counterclockwise to dislodge them. Continuing on from there, we're going to take hold of along the back side of the engine cover here. We're going to have to lift it straight up and out of the vehicle. Just a quick inspection of this and we'll set it aside. We've got the engine cover out of the way. Now let's have a look way down in here. This is where the coolant temp sensor is located. Now you could just reach down in here and try to grab hold of that wiring harness, but if you find that you don't have enough room, we can easily dislodge this and carefully pull it out of the way, giving us ample room to reach down inside this area. To dislodge this, you're going to find that you have a 10 millimeter headed bolt along the forward side of the fuse box. A quick inspection of the mounting hardware as we continue replace as necessary. Now you're going to find that you have two locking tabs holding this down. For these, you just want to carefully pry them away from the fuse box while lifting up. You can see it sliding away from the bracket. We'll repeat the process for the next one here. At this point, you can pull this aside and easily reach right down in this area. Now I'm going to hold this up here with a bungee cord. You can use pretty much anything you might have. Let's follow the wiring harness down to the coolant temp sensor. For this, you're going to find that it does have a locking tab that you need to squeeze in. You can slide this up and out of position, a quick inspection for corrosion. There's our small locking tab right there. Inspection for corrosion. We'll set that aside. With that disconnected, the next thing that you would want to do would be to remove the coolant temp sensor. But there's a couple things we want to think about. There is still coolant in the system. You could drain all the coolant out of the system so you prevent coolant from making its way out of here, or you can do as we're about to do. Go ahead and carefully remove it. A little bit of coolant will come out, so we'll have our collection receptacle under here, and then we're going to install the brand new coolant temp sensor as quick as possible. Now with that said, we wanna make sure we have the brand new coolant temp sensor prepared. You'll find that it came with a brand new O-ring gasket. We're going to slide that all the way up against the base. Now let's pause with the new one, make our way down to the original. Using a 17 millimeter, we're going to remove this. For me personally, I'm using a ratcheting wrench. Now we can spin this out of here. There's our sensor. Let's pay attention down there. I can see that I have my original gasket still in place. We need to make sure we remove that. You can use a small screwdriver, small pick, whatever you have. Slide that right out of there. Let's clean up the mounting point. As you can tell, there's just a tiny bit of coolant coming out of here. We're not too worried about that. We have our collection receptacle. And now we can install our brand new sensor. We do have that gasket already pre-installed on the sensor itself. All right, I get it started in there by hand. We'll continue on by snugging it up. Right there is bottomed out. Just make sure this is snug. 
The torque for this is nine foot pounds. If you have a hard time getting a torque wrench in this area, essentially just bottom it out and then take it a tiny bit further, ensuring that it's properly seated. Now it's time for the wiring harness. We'll align the locking tab with the corresponding area, press it in, listen for a click. We'll give it a light tug to ensure that's secured as well. I got a click from that, a little tug. Now before we continue putting anything else back together, let's clean the area. I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of parts cleaner here. Clean rag, quick wipe. Now let's continue on with that fuse box. We're going to align it with its mounting bracket, press it in. Listen for a click from each of the two locking tabs. We'll give it a little wiggle to ensure it's properly secured. Now we're going to install our 10 millimeter bolts along the front of the fuse box. Start it in by hand and snug it up. Now it's going to be time to check the cooling system. We did lose a tiny bit of cooling from the system, so what you need to do is carefully lift up that cooling cap one more time here. When doing this, you want to use the manufacturer specified fluid. We'll go ahead and top this off. You want to make sure you remove any air in the system. Now that we have this to the point that we've removed as much air from the system as possible, you want to continue on by starting up the vehicle. Let it run for a short while, make sure you have no coolant leaks. After you hear the cooling fan turn on, you know that you've burped out any air from in the system, we can go ahead and remove our coolant funnel. That's out of here. Once you're sure you're topped off properly, we'll continue on with reinstalling the cap by aligning it and turning it clockwise. After doing that, we're running the vehicle. We want to double check to make sure we have no leak from that coolant temp sensor. Even a tiny leak can be a major issue for your vehicle. After running it and you're sure you have no leak, reinstall your engine cover. For the engine cover, we want to pay attention to the small rubber grommets that are along the top of the intake. Looking along the bottom of the engine cover, you can see that you have two small locating tabs. Those will fit into the rubber grommets. After you have those aligned, we'll also align our two forward mounting screws. Shift this around, press it down, a light tug along the backside just to ensure that those are pressed in. Now it's time for those screws. For the screws, typically I just like to try to turn them counterclockwise a tiny bit so they're in the unlock position. Then we're going to lock them in by turning them a quarter turn clockwise. After you feel as though you have everything latched in, just go ahead and give that one last tug to confirm it's properly secured to your vehicle. Okay friend, we finished our installation. After you've topped off the fluid, you've confirmed you had no leaks and cleaned all your mess, go ahead and close the hood and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.